Hey everybody, welcome to Marriage Moment. I'm Jason, this is Renee. We are not marriage experts or marriage counselors. Why in the world are we doing this? <laughs> we do this because we love marriage and we think that uh, God's plan for marriage is really the best way to do it since he invented it. And so uh, we just try to put, put together some helpful videos so thank you for taking the time to watch this. Uh, if you are not a subscriber to our channel, we would love for you to subscribe, to like, and to share these videos. It really does help us. And I've got prizes for the first five people who email me, and I'll put my email address right here. The first five people who email me, we're going to give both of these books to you. One is for men only, and the other one is for women only, and these books, well, they're the same size, they're the same authors, they're the same publisher. The For Men Only book was like $12, but the For Women Only book was $15. Hmm. Is that a conspiracy? <laughs> Why is your book more expensive than my book? Why is your book more valuable than my book? Please explain. Probably the women only is bought more, so they put a higher price on it. <laughs> I don't know. So more women would buy this book than men would buy this book? Yeah. I'll buy that. Anyway, <laughs> these are free for the first five of you who email me. Um, you have to be a subscriber. You have to like this video and email me and we'll get you this whole set. These are really insightful books. They really are. And so what we're doing is for the next several weeks is just going chapter by chapter through each of these. Last week we did this one. It's for men only and it really gave us insight into what our women really need from us. And if you missed that, you can find it on this channel. Just look for the playlist. Today we're going to talk about for women only and I read this chapter. Even though I'm not a woman, um, I wanted to make sure I was ready for this video. So we're going to talk about for women only. Last week we discovered that as a woman, your greatest need is the answer to the question, do you still love me? Mm -hmm. Will you always love me? It's not the same thing for men. Men have a totally different need. Yes. In fact, some of the findings and research they did was pretty interesting here. And I'll just tell them what it is. And then you can help us, you can help out the ladies. <laughs> Since it is for women only, a man would rather, they did this study, and 81% of men responded in, in this fashion. The question was, if you had to choose between being loved or respected, which would you choose? And 81% of men said respected. In fact, the way they worded the question was, if you had to be unloved or respected, would you be okay with that? And the answer was, yeah. Because men translate respect as love. We don't translate love as respect and in a love centric love centric world it's kind of confusing so let's talk about ladies your man's greatest need from you to be respected yeah so this is huge it's a big big lesson it's just like last week's thing could transform a marriage this one little thing that they start this book out with transforming truly Really, it is. Um, and it was really interesting at the very beginning of the book, she just mentions, and I think this is a big deal too, that most things in a man's inner life, um, there are things that he wishes his partner knew, his wife knew about him. He has no idea how to explain it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's definitely true. Yeah. You don't have a clue. So I thought just knowing that little thing is really helpful for me to know that you want me to know these things about you but you have no idea how to put it into words that's I think a good place for a woman to start there and what we said last week that men and women are so different and if you can learn to embrace that and learn everything you can about your spouse it just sets your marriage up for success and that's I think what these books really are about absolutely um, so yeah you um, just said what everything about in the beginning of the book is that you need to feel respect yeah. and, and the title of the chapter is interesting it, remember it's for women only and the mm -hmm. title of the chapter is your love is not enough right your love is not enough for your man right that's a big deal to 
truly understand that. And, and it even said, if you want to love your man in the way he was wired to be loved, and that's by God, then you need to make sure that he knows and feels your respect most of all. So um, something that I think makes this so challenging is that most women do respect their husband, mm. but our, the things that we say and then our actions are showing something completely opposite. And sometimes we don't even know. You know, we had a, a time not too long ago that we were talking and I had no idea, no idea that I was even doing this. And I think it's because I'm a teacher and I've been a teacher for more than 20 years and I hang around with little kids all day, mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. And so when you're telling me something or you're explaining something, I interrupt and I don't fully listen to what you said. And if you understood how many conversations I have in a day, <laughs> You would understand that, but it, that was being, you took that as disrespect mm -hmm. and it was upsetting you. And so that was really eye-opening for me to know that. So I think it's good for men to know. Sometimes we don't even know <laughs> what we are conveying in our actions and in the things that we're saying. And sometimes we need you to tell us. So I think one of the biggest things in this chapter about respect was understanding, they said, women when we are feeling unloved our response is to cry mm -hmm. most often that's most women not everybody but most women our response is to cry so for men the way you know usually in most men when they're feeling disrespected it's going to come out as anger yep yeah. yeah if you wonder why your guy is angry a lot then really know why it's probably because he feels disrespected either by his spouse or his children, or the people he works with, but generally men don't know how to process in our brains or in our hearts this sense that we are not respected or that we feel like you think we're not adequate. We don't know what to do with that, so it, it just shows up as anger. Yeah. So it's kind of a big red flag in your relationship. If you notice your guy is always angry, there's probably a great deal or there is an area where he does not feel respected and it yeah. shows up as anger every time. So this was a thing that she said, whenever your man gets angry, you need to think about what did you just do? What did you just say that could be conveying disrespect? So I think we should define respect. Okay. Um, and in a marriage, it means that you're choosing to trust, you're choosing to appreciate and show that with your actions and your words. You admire your husband you believe in him and you honor him those that's a lot of mm -hmm. stuff those are big things but that's a, a true picture of what respecting mm -hmm. your man looks like so they spoke of and i've forgotten that we had read about this somewhere maybe it was in this book but there's a crazy cycle <laughs> that you can get into in a marriage and i think we've met uh, and known people and maybe some people in our family that they are in this crazy the cycle. The crazy cycle. And you see it. It's it's hard to be around people like this. Mm -hmm. um, where it's just this cycle of the woman is not feeling loved. So she doesn't show respect to her husband. So he feels slighted and disrespected. So he doesn't show love. So it's just going in a cycle. And maybe neither one of us knows what Why? we're doing. Yeah. yeah and it becomes really painful. So when I don't love you, one of your responses, even sometimes not thinking about it, is to not respect me. Mm -hmm. And then I don't feel respected, so I respond by not loving you. It's just just vicious cycle that goes on and on and on. Yeah. Somebody has to choose to break that cycle. Right, um, and it could just be one. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be both. For sure. Because it could just change the cycle. For sure. Um, and she mentioned, and I had forgotten about this, that in Ephesians it says, that um, wives respect your husband, husbands love your wives. That was my big takeaway, and you stole my thunder because that's Sorry. what I was going to talk about. <laughs> but my big takeaway from this chapter was that she brought it all back to Ephesians 5, which is the cornerstone New Testament teaching on marriage and family. And the words that God uses were so specific. He did not tell the husband to respect the wife. He told the husband to love the wife. He did not tell the wife 
to love her husband, he told the wife to respect her husband. It's, it's almost as if he designed us, he knew the way we were wired, and he gave these instructions to us that would listen, and they're so specific. Yeah. And some people read Ephesians 5, and I know a lot of women who are really offended by that chapter because maybe their husband isn't respectful or doesn't act respecting, but there's a reason that God chose those two words for each individual role. Wives, respect your husbands. Husbands, love your wife. Why? Because wives, your husband's greatest need is to be respected. Mm -hmm. And husbands, your greatest, your wife's greatest need is to be loved. So it turns out God knows what he's talking about. Yeah. Go figure. Well, he designed it. Right. <laughs> so I think my takeaway from this was how much power a woman has um, in her husband's life. And I think this also trickles down to a son. Mm. They even mentioned that, um, that a woman showing disrespect to her husband in front of a son or in a daughter too and um, also showing disrespect to their son can kind of set up for a pattern of behavior yeah, a pattern. expectation of marriage. Mm -hmm. but it goes the other way too i have so much power in when i show respect even sometimes when maybe you're not acting like someone who needs respect. Mm -hmm. They talked about that too, that it's kind of like a parent-child relationship that I had to honor my dad, even when he wasn't showing me that he right. needed honor, that he deserved honor. And it's the same thing because God asked us, he commanded us to respect our husbands. And then it begins to transform you whenever a wife does that for her man. And so she got real specific. Mm -hmm. And I think these are really big. There are things that, um, if this is something that is a problem in your marriage or um, you've seen it in a parental marriage or in a family, or maybe you have friends, I think this is huge too. You hang out with a, a couple all the time and you're really close together and they have a problem with this. You're gonna see these mm -hmm. things come up and they're red flags and they're things just things that you can start with to show respect right. to your husband. So um, five areas she gave. So the first one is respecting his judgment. And it just means um, that I'm gonna respect what you, what I think you know, and, and I'm not gonna argue. Um, I mean, it doesn't mean that I can't have an opinion, but I'm gonna respect your judgment and I'm gonna defer to you when there's a big decision, or when there's something around the house that we need to do, to do something with the kids. Um, I remember a long time ago, I realized you knew what you were talking about and a lot of things with parenting um, that I needed to just defer to you, especially when the kids became teens, because you knew teens. And um, it's, it's a big deal for a woman to respect her husband's judgment. And I think some, I could be wrong, but I think one of the reasons some women have trouble respecting the judgment of their man is um, it doesn't always it doesn't always seem like he's making the right decisions. Like if I trust his judgment, it's going to go south. If I trust his judgment in the past, um, it just hasn't worked out. But there's this place scripturally for a man to be the decision maker. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons women might fear respecting the judgment of their husband is that it's an opportunity for the husband to just kind of swoop in and make all the decisions and it's my way or the highway kind of attitude. But what I found is it's actually the opposite. For any honest man, when somebody trusts me with something, I don't feel like that's something I ever want to take advantage of. In fact, it makes me want to be a better person. Mm -hmm. When you trust my judgment, it makes me go, oh crap, <laughs> I better do this right. It's, it, it actually has the reverse effect. You might think that it's gonna open a door for him just to be an overlord in your life, but more likely than not, what it's doing is inspiring your husband to be the best version of himself that he can be and make the best decisions that he can. Yeah, and, and I think as women, we need to know, sometimes <clears throat> you're gonna mess up, 
That's a lot. okay. We mess up a lot. <laughs> Us too. Mm -hmm. So that goes both ways. Right. So um, that's number one. Number two, respecting your abilities mm -hmm. as a man. Um, I think this may come up later in the book. I think there's something, or maybe in the For Men Only book, about it's almost like you're, you feel like an imposter and you don't want anybody to know that you don't know how to do something. So if I am demeaning you or um, thinking that you don't have the ability to do something, and sometimes it's a very small thing that we say or some action that we take, like doing something for you or trying to help you. Or tell us how to do it. Or tell you how to do it yeah. like a mommy. Yeah. That's very demeaning right. and very disrespectful to right. you. And I'm glad she brought this up because as a man, we just have a need, right or wrong, good or bad, we have a need to figure stuff out. If something's broken, there's a there's a part of your husband's brain that says, well, I'm a man, I should be able to figure this out. Mm -hmm. And that has gotten us, me, in a lot of trouble. One, you know, shout out to Ed. I just <laughs> made my late in life adult decisions based on my friend Ed who's has a motto that if one man can do it, well, so can another. All I have to do is figure it out. <laughs> Just learn how to do it. Ed built his house mm -hmm. on that, that premise that if one man can do it, well, so can another. I just need to learn. I need to figure it out. Men have that need to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And when you're, when you are telling us what to do and how to do it, you are undermining that need in us. Even if we don't figure it out immediately, if you just give us a chance to figure it out like the stupid sink, yeah. like we have this sink, and if you walk by it too too strongly, the pipes underneath come disconnected and it just leaks everywhere. Not the supply, but the drain. And I've fixed that five or six times since we've lived here. And you've never once said, could you just call a dang plumber and get this fixed? You've let me just figure it out. And I've had to replace the floor in there a couple of times. But it, I don't feel demeaned or like I'm inadequate. I know I can't do it. I know I don't have the skill to do it, but I enjoy messing with it. Even though it makes me mad, it makes me want to cuss. Mm -hmm. But I appreciate you just letting me figure it out and without saying, you're not a plumber, you're a preacher. <laughs> what are you doing? Well, I think we've been married long enough that I've learned to just show appreciation. Mm -hmm. If you give any time or um, your talent to do something around the house especially, I'm so grateful. So I've learned to... Respect your man's abilities, yeah. <laughs> big or small. So number three, respect what he accomplishes. Um, I think this kind of is tied into the sure. abilities, but um, just showing respect and showing that appreciation and having trust in someone, uh, in your spouse, whenever they're wanting to do something and then they accomplish that thing. Um, just noticing, I think, shows some respect. Mm -hmm. So. Um, the fourth one is respect in communication. And I think that one just goes to, it speaks to the words that we say and that we communicate with each other and we show respect. Because I think, you know, we've said this before that the people you live with, the people that you love the most, sometimes you treat them the worst and especially with our words. Um, so I think, and I've known women that, um, this has become just a pattern and their communication is so disrespectful mm -hmm. and they almost become toxic to everyone in the family and then it spreads out into other people in their life at work and um, just friends and stuff. Um, this one's huge and this is on women <laughs> because we are the communicators and we must be respectful with our words. It's very important. We can, we can do, I think this part of the chapter said that women can wield so much damage mm -hmm. with just their words being disrespectful. Um, and then this last one, I had um, a little thing that came up at work recently that I had to just make a decision that I wasn't going to step in and join in with what the women were doing because this fifth one is respecting in public you're a man and that's how you talk about him when he's not there and how you talk about him in front of other people mm -hmm. and to him I think how you talk to him in front of other people 
there were some co-workers of mine that were kind of bashing their husbands and I decided not to speak out and say, you know, go against them and say they shouldn't be saying those things. I just chose not to join in. But I wasn't going to say things like that about you as my husband. Um, and I would never speak poorly of you in front of you, in front of other people. And it goes the other way that when I respect you and I um, speak of you respectfully in front of other people and in public, that's huge to you, isn't it? It's um, a really big deal. It's, I am the one that holds the greatest power yeah. in that one because I'm your wife. So that's a probably a good one to start with if that's something that has become a pattern in a, in a couple's life. Or they, maybe a woman doesn't even realize that she's doing it. Mm -hmm. um, to start there. I think that's a good place to stop. And I think what you just said is a good thing to remind all the ladies watching this that you wives, you have the most power in your man's life when it comes to him feeling respected. Mm -hmm. You above all others have the most power. So use it, and use it to make sure your guy feels respected. And I love what one of the guys in the response said. That the question was, well, what do we do? The, the, the lady asked, what do we do? And one man put it powerfully, Always assume the best, and you will find it's easier to show respect. Hmm. Um, I think that's exactly right, and I think that's why that's in 1 Corinthians 13, that love always assumes or believes, believes the, best. the best. Believing the best about your husband is a way to start to show respect for him. Mm -hmm. Anywho, hope that's helpful. First five of you that send me an email, and if you're a subscriber, and if you like this video, I'm going to send you this in the mail. They're super helpful, super easy to read. And one is more valuable than the other. So just keep that in mind when you go. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Hope you guys have a great night. See you later.